Hey guys, welcome back. This is episode 17 of our make of the uh, Make an RPG series using Unity and C Sharp. And today I'm going to continue to go over player input and movement. Um, so I'm in the project, like always, and I added a new folder, and it's just textures. And I went on uh, to Google and I typed in grid, and I gra grabbed a texture, and it's because I'm going to be creating a basically just a test area in our scene, so we can start adding things to it and testing movement. Uh, just so it's a little bit more fun. So <clears throat> the first thing I want to do is um, first things you guys need to do. I add a directional light to the scene, so you need to go to uh, Game Object, Create Other, and Add Direction Light, and then just drag it up to the top. So I'll show you that real quick. I'll delete the one I have. Uh, so like I said, go to Game Object, Create Other, Direction Light, and I I just like to just drag it out of the scene. Like I I don't need it. I don't, it's gonna do the same. Uh, it's gonna be the same no matter where I put it for right now. So the next thing I want you to do is we're gonna create another game object and it's gonna be a cube. I'm going to reset it. So I went to transform, hit the gear uh, shape, and hit reset. So it sets it all back to uh, its normal values. And I'm gonna change the x and z value to 50. So we have this giant platform that you can see here. And this is just going to be a great area for us to test different things, triggers and uh, jumping and running and just any type of movement, anything really. You can test uh, enemy AI, battling, whatever you have in your project. It's a, it's a good idea just to have a basic test scene. Um, so the reason why I got the texture is because I'm going to actually grab it here and drag it, drag it and drop it. It's not the most, you know, it's not the most perfect texture. I actually might change it to a... a better grid instead of a hex it's kinda of dark but it'll work for right now so the next thing we're gonna do is uh, go to game object and we're gonna add a capsule and the capsule you can see here in the if you look down in our uh, camera view you can see where it is on in the world I'm just gonna drag it down a little bit make sure it's not falling through the floor and then the last thing I'm gonna do with this uh, capsule is gonna go add component and I'm gonna add a character controller now I don't know if I'll be able, I don't know if I'll fin I'll cover character controllers totally in this video. I'm gonna start doing it, um, but this is what we're gonna we're gonna have it attached to a capsule for now because I don't have a model I don't have a rig model or anything, and uh, we'll use this uh, character capsule as our uh, basic basic uh, player character for now. Uh, if you guys have models, feel free to import them. Do you know I I can cover that in the later in videos down the road I don't uh, I'm not really good at modeling so uh, anyways so we have the capsule add a character control we have the cube the direction light and uh, that's it for now now we're gonna open up our player movement scripts in model development uh, in model develop like we've been working on and where I left off last time was that we had this transform dot translate function and basically what this does is it it tells whatever the transform is attached to, whatever this script is attached to, tells that transform to move or translate a distance, calculate a distance to move. And um, there's a few things, this works fine, but right now it's really fast. So what we want to do, what I want to show you guys is how to kind of smooth out how it moves and, um, and add a speed to it. So the first thing that you want to do is, uh, what we're going to do is make it public. Uh, variable and we're gonna call it uh, move speed and we're just gonna set this to 100 now it might be too much might be too little we'll figure it out and I forgot to make it an integer could be a float if you want uh, depends on how precise we'll make it a float just so we can get more specific with our um, values and make sure you put the F on the end for C sharp you always need the F for, for floats in uh, C sharp so the next thing what we're gonna do is come down to this translate and change this vector three dot back to vector three dot forward, just so we can keep with W going uh, forward. And instead of I'm adding parentheses here because we're going to uh, do a few things. So instead of just saying we're going to move forward, we're going to multiply this forward by a move speed, and then we're going to use time dot delta time. Now this is going to make smooth out our animation, smooth out the translation animation just a little bit. Um, it's going to make it move. I think delta time is uh, based on the f uh, frame rate or it. Yeah. Anyways, 
you'll see it'll, it's gonna it should move a lot slower when we uh it's definitely when we change the move speed so I'm going to um, attach the script the player movement script to our capsule and drag this down a little bit so we can kind of see and I'm gonna press play and if I hit W we're still moving really fast so I'm gonna go down and change this we'll change our speed to like 50 and it should be a lot still pretty fast so I'm gonna pause stop the game real quick let's change it to 25 here we go and you can see it's moving a lot a lot smoother I'm gonna stop it again we'll change it to 15 and what you can do with this move speed variable say okay this is like a this move speed variable can be adjusted say you have a buff or you drink a potion in your game or something anything really uh, you can make that variable uh, you can access that move speed variable and change it and that's that's something to think about for your uh, projects so here we go it's a little slower I'm going to um, change this get button I'm going to change this to get button and uh, I'm going to change this one to S and uh, instead of these deep I'm going to keep these debugs I'm going to actually erase these debug statements and I'm going to uh, do another transform dot translate and this time we're going to make it go backwards so we're going to do a vector 3 dot back we're going to multiply it by our move speed And then we're going to multiply that by time dot delta time. Now another thing with time dot delta time is that you can use it to uh, find. Basically, it's it's converting the speed into uh, seconds. So time dot delta time is perfect if you're needing to time different things. Um, you can have it. Uh, you can have a value in your update function that continually subtracts by time dot delta time, and it's going to run down in seconds. So it's a good uh, makeshift timer. I suggest though, if you need timers, uh, look at the uh, C sharp, the Microsoft C sharp uh, timer class because it's pretty powerful. But anyways, what I did here is I changed, uh, I added this get button, so we're gonna press S. Should find it. Might need to be get key. I don't remember exactly. And then we're gonna uh, translate backwards instead of forwards. So I'm gonna control S to save. We're gonna go back into Unity, and I'm going to uh, keep our movement speed at 15. I'm gonna press play, and now we should see. Okay, so it does need to be get key, which is all right, get key. Control S. Go back. And now we got some movement going. So that's good. Now, now I'm going to add our um, A, uh, A and D keys for some more movement. So right here, you see that I'm going to get rid of this up. And instead of, um, oh, I'm going to copy it because we need one for D. Yep, copy one for D. Okay, and this is like I said D. And so in A, we're going to be A if I believe, or A moves left. That's what we want. And so A is going to move, uh, in the negative x direction. And so we're going to go transform dot translate. And we're going to do uh, vector three dot left times move speed times time dot delta time control s I'm gonna copy this put this in D and instead of left I'm gonna make it right control s to save go back to unity and we're gonna let's see let's see what it's doing Oh, so here you go. We see that we're moving left and right, and we're moving forward and back, which is perfect. So we got some character movement. It's not perfect. It's not the best, but it's getting the job done. So I'm gonna uh, pause, and the next thing I'm gonna do is I want to show you guys a another transform function. It's called transform dot rotate, and what this will what we're going to do now is instead of moving to the left, we can actually have it rotate to the left. So the model rotates to the left. So the new forward and back is um, it, well instead of yeah instead of like sh like if you wanted to translate to the left or right, you, it's basically more of a uh, strafing move instead of a rotation move. And so we're going to look at the uh, rotating. So we're going to use another vector three, and it's going to be 
I believe that takes a vector three, so I think we can do just uh, two dot left again, and we're gonna multiply it by uh, time dot delta time this time. And I'm gonna comment out this transform translate. I'm gonna go back into Unity. I'm gonna press play. We might get an error. But we'll see. And if you can see, I'll zoom in. It's gonna be. It's might be really hard to see, but the can't, it's actually rotating, and it's actually rotating uh, the wrong way. But this is the idea. So I'm gonna pause this real quick. I'm gonna I think. Change it to forward, and I'm actually going to put our move speed in here, just so we can, so I can hopefully show you guys on the camera better that, that it actually is moving. So here we go. Now it's rotating. I'm trying to think of what direction. Maybe it's zero. We just want it to rotate around itself. No, it's not zero. What is it? Um. Let's see, we got. So I think I need to. Um, I, don't, I don't remember exactly. Oh, here we go. <laughs> so it's up. This one would be down. Because we're rotating around the y axis, that's what it is. So before I was rotating around the z and x axis, but in uh, Unity, y is up. Uh, which is this green axis, and so we want to rotate around either going uh, the positive or negative x or y axis, excuse me. So now you can see that we're rotating left, and it's pretty slow, which is okay. It's not exactly what we want, but what we can do in here is get, we can actually get rid of time delta time if we need, and just say we're going to rotate by our move speed, or if this becomes too fast, which it is. Uh, we're going to actually come in here and we're going to create a new public variable. It's going to be public of float, we'll call it rotate uh, speed. And I know 15 is too fast, so I'll just do 5.0f. And uh, come back down here. We're going to change instead of uh, our rotate move speed, we're going to be rotate speed. Controls to save, go back into Unity. And let's let's test it out. See what we have. See how it's doing. It's pretty good. I'm gonna actually slow down our player player uh, movement speed down to 10. And then I'm gonna go. Oh, cancel. I'm gonna go into our D key and I'm gonna do the transform dot rotate, not rotation, rotate. And I'm gonna do the same vector three dot up. And then we're gonna times it by our, our rotate speed. Controls to save. I'm gonna go back into Unity, and now we should be rotating both ways. Oh, real quick, I forgot to uh, comment that out. Okay, again, go back into Unity, press play. We're rotating both ways, and we can move. So now we actually have a character. Not the most perfect character, but it works. So let's say now we got this working. Let's say you want to sprint. Say you want to be able to sprint. We're going to attach it to the mouse button. So let's say if you're holding down, uh, this is the right mouse button. We're going to want to change our move speed, and we'll set it equal to let's say 20. 20. Don't forget the dot f or dot uh, decimal and then zero f. Control S to save. We're going to go back to Uni, and now. You can, if I press, oh, if I press the right mouse button, we're moving a lot faster. So it's just a thing you could do. Um, what you need to do, actually, it's not totally perfect. What needs to happen is move speed. Basically, if that button, basically once it hap once it's down. In this situation, once you hit it once, move speed stays at 20. We don't want that, so you want it to have to reset. So you have, you can say um, if input, actually we're going to do if exclamation point input dot mouse button. 
uh, one. Then we're going to say move speed is equal to five. Uh, what do we have? I think 10.0f. So basically, what I just did here is I'm saying if the mouse button's down, our move speed's 20. If it's not down, then our move speed's just going to be 10. And this exclamation point just makes it uh, looking for false instead of true. So I'm going to control this to save. Going to go back to Unity. Play. We're running, we're running, we're running. We're twisting. Oh. So you can see me speed up. Hopefully you can see it on the uh, on the uh, camera, on the screen recording. But basically we have a character right now. It's not... This isn't the best way to handle character movement, but like I said in the last video, this is the best way I think to get a character, just to get something up and running. So say you have this really cool idea, you don't want to spend the time creating a really, um, really complex character movement system. This is like the best way you can get this prototype up in a matter of minute, you know, 10, 15 minutes. You can have a working character model running around in the game world, and that's why I wanted to cover it. I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, you know, just messing around now, it's a ton of fun to play around with, and we can definitely add more uh, in the future. But uh, anyways, I hope you guys liked the video. Please like and subscribe. I can't believe I've gotten 30 subscribers or whatever. I think 31 it's at right now already, and all the views. I really appreciate it. Um, so I hope you guys look forward to the next video, and I'll see you next time.